Greetings family, this is Bomani Tayemba and welcome to our Black Star Pan-African Community uh, meeting. And this is a private meeting with our group members, uh, which we'll also share publicly for those who want to know more about uh, our updates and what we're doing at Black Star Pan-African Community. So I'm here as president of the organization and I have my brother Azibo as vice president of the organization. Uh, we have Prince as secretary of the organization, and then we have other members of the organization who have acquired land in the first 15 and also the second phase of 60 uh, acres. So what we're talking about is just direct updates as uh, we've been building this operation from September of 2019. So we're coming up on three years. And I know sometimes when people look at years and things like that, they feel and think a whole lot of things are supposed to get done. But what I'm talking to everyone mainly about is the updates as far as us finalizing our legal paperwork and things like that. I know sometimes people feel like all these things should be done up front, but then again, it's not that simple. You're trying to do a whole lot of things and as much as possible. So right now we have our incorporation already set. We have paid uh, for the 15 acres of land and that was almost uh, two years ago. And uh, we have paid for a whole lot of different uh, surveys. And um, most of us have gotten our deed of assignment. So now the next thing to do is to complete the surveys, the 2022 surveys, uh, for those who have submitted surveys the last few months. Uh, so that's gonna take a little work. We're trying to get our surveyor Evans uh, to work with another surveyor so we can just get updated on those things. So those are the things that's looking to, uh, to be worked on and also looking to, you know, in about two months, or once the rain slows down in Ghana, to just completely clear the land again and get all of the, the, the land laid out again to where we put pillars back up uh, and redo them fresh. That way, when anyone go to the land, they can just walk and see their, you know, see their plot with simplicity. Uh, so that's one of the things that uh, we need to make sure that's done. And definitely when our next group gets uh, to Ghana, on December 29th on the land, they'll be able to see uh, the land looking nice and smooth. Uh, and from there on, we can kind of plan things out like road and things like that, but it's a lot to be done. So at any moment, anyone ever want to participate in any of the research that needs to be done, we can definitely do that. But right now, uh, what we have set up is, um, we've gotten all of the pre preliminary uh, things that need to be done for registration. And uh, we're setting, sending in registration payments uh, for the land. To, uh, to block certain things and to also just get everything in the system to where in a month or two months from now, when anyone look for our 15 acres based on the survey that we have on a website or the survey that everyone have access to, it would say Black Star Pan-African Community. And then that's be the last set of things. And then we can work on that, finalizing everyone's uh, lot to where their name, their, their plot number uh, is on their legal paperwork, their, their deed is finalized, all the things on the deed of assignment is literally filled out and to where they have their, you know, their land papers. Uh, so for some people who, you know, who paid their registration already, you're good to go. Uh, that money will be used to pay the, you know, pay the registration uh, that's currently uh, owed. And then for those who are, are remaining, they'll pay the registration and then uh, give it about, um, a month or two, we should be able to just have everything organized to where we can start doing the process I mentioned to you about those paperwork. And so, so um, and then you got the, you know, some people have left, so, you know, we have paperwork in their name and we have to fix those things. So it's, uh, it's not a simple thing when you have to just do double and triple work based on the fact that you have people who commit themselves and change their minds. And then you're trying to work it out with them uh, through refunds and things like that. Uh, so uh, we have survived, um, uh, you know, a long uh, six months uh, seem like a whole year, uh, but I'm telling people that uh, you know we're strong and this is what we do. We we're building an expertise in becoming people who can help you get you know, legal land in Ghana, get all your legal paperwork, get all the things that you need put in place, and be able to just live in peace and build uh, your home and be a part of a community that has your back. Uh, the, to be able to put yourself in a situation where you're working, which your own people that um, you know that you can just put you know literally this put together a support system where we can just literally this when you're putting your money together you're creating and building generational wealth 
Uh, so it's uh, all hands on deck in an end uh, or aspect of just what needs to be done and things like that. Uh, so I've almost completed what I agreed to complete, which is to make sure that we all have legal land and papers to where you can just be free to just live on your land, build what you need to build. And if you change your mind, you need to resell it or anything, you can do those things. But all those things is a series of ridiculous work and long process. Try to work with the, the chief, the attorney, the consultant, the surveyor, uh, the people at the Lands Commission. And you know, regardless if uh, I'm here in Georgia or there in Ghana, it's just, it's consistent work. And I can't stay there in Ghana for a whole time. And that's why we have a team of people there. And we even have gone above and beyond and have built an office there, right there outside of our uh, community. Um, and we didn't actually build a home there, but uh, we you know, acquired a one uh, year deal lease uh, to where we can just have a three bedroom, two bathroom house and build what you'd have eventually as our real estate operation there. Uh, so, and the main purpose there of that op operation is to help people relocate in that same community where you can get access to a three bedroom, two bathroom house, or maybe something smaller, or you can go in with someone else and live there for a year. And then you can look up every day and right across the street, you see your land and you can build on your land. So, and then also, you know, when you come to see your land, you have, you know, people like Azebo there, uh, right there at the office, managing the office, and uh, he'll be able to give you updates on what's going on and show you the land. So these are things that we've been building as a foundation, and it's more important to build a foundation of things. So I'm letting everybody know that all the things that we have put in place have been structured and organized, and any clear up of uh, vested land, uh, what I want to do is just do the screen sharing and just get that document as we read that document. All right, there we go. And uh, perfect. So hopefully everybody can see it. Um, uh, hopefully somebody's on a desktop computer. Let me ask Kwame if he can see this real good. Uh, yes, I can see it. I'm trying to get it to nice to the image. Zoom, you can zoom in. We can't see it word by word, but uh, definitely it came up, but not word by word. Uh, yes, it should be showing the full top and the bottom uh, if you're on a desktop computer, but if you're on your phone. Oh, okay. Yeah, it worked. I zoomed in on it. Okay, it worked. All right, perfect. So hopefully everybody can see um, that right there. This comes from the palace and that's Nana Haiti operation. It's signed stamp right there. And that was literally June 13th, uh, 2022. And that's the day before I left. And that's um, all after... Um, you know, I looked at his archive copy, which um, the best thing to do is to, you know, is to write this letter, but he mainly wanted to just address the, you know, the frustrated situation of people ignorance of, uh, of vested land and things like that. And I told people that if all of this was not, uh, you know, not what we say was, you know, we can't be processing land registration and things like that. You know, and the Lands Commission have been out there uh, to the land. Uh, the chief has been also, you know, been required on a few occasions to go to Lands Commission. And right now we have uh, one of our newest consultant that's working with us. He's right there in Cape Coast working to get the land registered and I've submitted him all the documents that we need to get things set up. And uh, both chiefs that, that have land acquisition ownership in that area where our 15 acres sit on, they're there to, to fix up whatever discrepancy or anything that they have with land boundaries and things like that. And it's a situation you're telling people that uh, everyone that we have is working together to make sure that we're doing these things, but land process is very difficult in Ghana. And the most important thing is that, you know, we've been dealing with the right set of people and we have had all of our paperwork nice and clean. The only thing is that we need to do is there's a portion of the original survey uh, when we acquired, it was, uh, it was going for 25 acres and we was only able to get 15. That's how we got the 50 now because portions of it was revival ministry. And it showed that on the old land search. So in order to get the land search cleared up, you know, both chiefs of both areas have to be available to clear it up. So what you need at this point is a consultant that's gonna be there in the middle and work with both of them to do these things and set up registration. 
So little by little from the beginning, we have acquired the land and been putting things in place. Uh, we should be proud of ourselves to literally just get things done little by little because that's the, the nature of how it takes. And that's why it's good to just go ahead and make the land deal up front and work with the people that you know you have working with you. Uh, so this is Nana Haiti um, letter and let me just uh, read the letter and explain it as best as possible. Um, him certifying that this 15 acre and 60 acre land deal is a deal legally made. Also the paperwork that I have joined Black Star Pan-African community, the legal contract is there, the 99 year lease, the memorandum of understanding. Uh, we have seal sti sign stamp doc survey. Aziba, let me uh, meet you back and things like that. No one has ever seen a group of people put together as much legal organized documentation as we have put together before. And just the fact that uh, we, know we don't have final registration completed, uh, some people are freaking out and things like that. And that's because people see the land search say vested, committed, vested uh, land, uh, people are freaking out and people are being manipulated to think that uh, we're doing some kind of hijacking and things like that. And I tell people, I'm a person that show my face, show my home, show everything I'm about every day. I don't run, I don't hide. I don't do any of those things. I'm about my business and everything. And my goal in this whole operation is to, to create, make us a multi-million dollar entity and build corporate economics to the highest level. And I appreciate everyone that have had our back and support us and everybody that stuck with us uh, throughout the whole time of everything that we're dealing with from the beginning of this long journey from 18 years to even up to the last three years of us trying to build our own energy called Black Star Pan-African Community. And, uh, and with all the people that's out there, some people saying one thing, some people saying another thing, but the reality of it is, if people wanna know what's going on, this is the source of information. You can join our calls, you can connect with us, you can reach out to me directly. You don't need, to, uh, you don't need, a, you don't need a BBC, fake BBC, or these other people that's out there that's just one of those, uh, confuse you with things you know uh, what we have pulled off is a very incredible deal and the way it's been laid out that's from operating from here in georgia going back and forth and putting things together you know this is straight like organized like naval military operation to the highest level one of the greatest logistic operation of trying to build a bridge and connect people from the african diaspora from the americas to the african continent and we're doing this a hundred years uh, uh later stronger than you know, than anyone else have ever done this, you know, to where we have people living, doing business and establishing themselves. And just because other people have failed before us so have not been able to do this, people want to come and come at us the wrong way. But I'm letting people know that no matter what they come up with and lie they want to tell themselves or tell whoever about fraudulent land and fake land deals and things like that. That's why we have contracts, because we expect people to be educated, to make a commitment and stick with us. And we expect people to understand that if you're going to do something like this, it's it's a whole lot into it. And if we're going to be doing a runaround and sacrificing our time and uh, putting our, you know, our, our, ourselves in certain situations, then we're going to need people to be fully committed. So from here on, I'm telling anyone that's looking to join us, do not join us unless you're 100% clear and have 100% fully commitment to what we're building. And if you're not clear about certain things, ask the right questions before you commit, because this is a journey where we can build it stronger if we didn't have all of these distractions and people just literally just destroying aspects of what we're doing and things like that. But just because they're ignorant, they're jealous, they're weak, or they just have certain mindset, you know? But whatever they feel and believe, they can believe because they're gonna look up 10, 20 years from now and what they're gonna see in that whole town of Jahadzi is a black empire with factories, resorts, with everything that you can think of. I've been working on this organized plan for a long time and we've been building it little by little. So I'm telling people, if you wanna see certain progress, be a part of the research. Say, you know, I'm gonna research about the roads. I'm gonna to talk to the right officials. I'm gonna, or next person say, I'm gonna find out how to fund road projects and things like that. But for people to put pressure and for us to do everything and things like that, when certain things don't done, be, are not done, blame us. Or for, for people who feel that this, that I shouldn't live in Georgia and I should be living in Ghana on the property. You know, people are gonna feel and say all kinds of things and they're gonna, and it's all up to people to have their opinions or whatever. It don't matter to me. I know uh, based on building these operations, I know what I'm building, I know what I'm doing. And the only thing I ask for people to do is to trust me. And if you don't trust me or can't trust me, don't get involved with this because I'm not coming this far 
from uh, spending all my time learning all the things I've had to learn to run these operations and to build a future and what we're building and to set a trend. Now you see it's popular, people doing tours to Africa, people, you know, uh, people, you know, people are moving, people doing these things. You know what I mean? You're talking about, you're talking about these things weren't popular, but in our modern day energy, we build, you know, we set the trend and things like that. And even though I've never lived, you know, no more, I said stayed no more than longer than six weeks or, or one to two months in any parts of anywhere in Africa. That don't mean anything, but we literally built what people see today. And we're literally taking it to another level by going to all these different countries and using the resources to build our community and using that community energy to also build our projects in those countries. So what we have set up is just incredible. And we are looking for people who understand what we're doing to come and let's connect together. And for the people who don't understand and confuse about what it is, they need to go, you know, go their own way and do what they need to do. Do what works for you. Uh, you know, or you can just keep on watching us, but, you know, and I'm a person, you know, we have, we have a, you know, we're going to keep on providing classic entertainment as far as just how we structure what we're doing and build what we're doing. Uh, so let me just go to Nana uh, Haiti's uh, letter. I, Nana Haiti the third, hereby state that Jahadzi Stew, which I currently occupy, is the owner of Jahadzi land. So Jahadzi land is all the land that we have acquired from the 15 to the 60 acres in that uh, area. And uh, Nana Haiti has showed us different land deals that he have, he's doing with other people because we're also looking to build a nice industrial energy there. Uh, even though Jahadzi land is vested in the state, I, as the occupant of the stool, has the legal right to lease out the land to anyone with the consent of the Lands Commission. Consequently, I emphatically state that I have leased two separate 15 acre and 16 acre land to Black Star Pan African community through their representative Bomani Tamba and the Lands Commission has been duly notified of the said leases. Official registration of the lease land in the name of Backstar Pan-African Community, uh, which the Land Commission Cape Coast is yet to commence since the statutory registration fee has not been paid for BSPAC. For the avoidance of doubts, I hereby unequivocally state that the said land, the vested land, are not state land and the government of Ghana does not own Jahadzi land. The state only hold Jahadzi land in trust for the stool. I have absolute legal right, title and interest as the occupant of Jahadzi stool to grant lease of the said land to other people. So that's what Nana Haiti did, he grant us um, a lease. So the only issue that went on with the whole situation is when the land search was done and it showed a portion of the land being belonged to revival ministry. So once that happened, uh, you know, we have to just clear those things up before we just do registration, registration. So th these things are literally in place. So I literally spent um, 10 days after the journey in Ghana and extended my stay as much as I could because, you know, I have a work and business here to do uh, in Georgia uh, and got everyone I need to get together and put together a nice meeting and got everyone to work together to get this done for our group. Uh, so it is, uh, you know, so that's it family. Um, we have been able to just work it out to where we've been able to acquire legal land and now the land is being registered based on the people who have put registration money down. And then when everyone else paid their registration, that'll be final registration. So we are set on that. And this is the man's um, stamp sign. And all of us are always on recording. Uh, we have recorded in his home, in his town. And I've recorded here in my home. And we have showed our face. We've been real about everything. At no point anyone have accused us of the ridiculous thing that they have accused of us. And we have hide and run. Only thing we have done is double up and you know, make ourselves more organized and build our documentation. Because that's what people come at. People come at and they look at certain things and they want to just make the little judgments versus going to do the work that it takes to pull this deal off. This is serious work to pull off. I mean, they can't just be some, you know, you know some person with, you know, with, with, with little to no education this, and just want to, just because you're just excited and want to do this to do this. You know, you have to be, understand serious business and be able to deal with different people. And, you know, you're talking about a complete different country. You're talking about international business. Uh, with the laws and the flow of how things done are different. Uh, so, um, and, uh, you know, our attorney's office is right there in 
across and none of us are in any situation where we have you know where we have any secret location that we're hiding from and things like that so I want to let people know that uh, our operation is has never faltered or failed we're strong and we're only going to get stronger because we're literally going to um uh, literally get to the point where looking at different options of how we can just literally just build out the community and actually start working on the uh, 60 acres and start getting that in the process of where we just get the registration going little by little. And hopefully after a few more people invest uh, in that um, land, after a while we can just get final registration done. And then all legal paperwork will be so much easier now, now that we have everything set up and uh, updating our business and corporation. So uh, it, it will show some of our names and some of our Ghanaian partners. And it's one of those things where what we're building is a partnership between um, us here in the African diaspora and our partners there in Ghana. So a lot of things, the partners that I have there in Ghana are they're part of. And honestly, that's the only reason and way I've been able to get anything done. So don't feel away when you look at certain legal paperwork and you see certain people there as a director along with myself or other people. You know, it's you know, it's people I trust. All the people that are that are part of this whole operation that we're building, as far as this community, it's people that I've known for a while and I trust. And then as far as the new people, we're building relationships so we are clear about what we're working on. So what I want to do before I talk too much into certain things and then for anything that I didn't cover, uh, what I want um, us to do is just bring it up and we'll talk about it. But my good brother, Azibo, I want you to unmute yourself and introduce yourself to everybody and let everyone know what we've been doing there since we have acquired the office there over the last six months. You got it, all right. Um, well, we got here, we, we secured this this area. Uh, Greens Azibo, I want you to make sure you give 2020. Azibo, give an introduction. 2020, uh, it was 2021, but give an introduction uh, to yourself, I was saying. And then give some updates. What's that? I was saying give an introduction about yourself. Don't just start talking. And then to give an update. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my name is uh, Baba Azibo Adjani, and I'm um, president of the uh, Black Star Pan African Community, uh, vice president. And uh, uh, I, I've been, I've been uh, a part of this, uh, this organization for like about a year, year, two years. Uh, but I've been knowing Bomani for like uh, like eight, nine years almost. But I, I never met him in person. Uh, we've had conversations, things of that sort. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I've been a Pan-Africanist for uh, ever since I was 17, 17 years old. Uh, briefly, a uh, uh, member of the Black Panther Party. Uh, um, I didn't. I didn't join the UNIA, but uh, I did join the, the Shrine of Black Madonna. Um, student, uh, a bachelor's degree at Wayne State University, of graphic design, illustration. Uh, uh, I just, uh, you know, how did I get here? Uh, how did I? you know, uh, become a participant in uh, uh, this movement in uh, Bamani and uh, Black Star was, uh, it was, it was my calling. It, this is, this was my calling. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I've really never been in love with the U.S., never been in love with white folks. Never been in love with the condition uh, that you know that we've been gone, been through as a people. You know, uh, I'm not going back to America. I, I I don't like America. You know, uh, this is my life, and I've dedicated my life to the liberation struggle of Black people. And uh, I, I think uh, that Bomani has a sound uh, program. You know. It's, it's similar to what I studied about Marcus Garvey, you know, uh, and uh, you know, uh, if we can, if we can, if we can pull it off here, we can pull it off anywhere. 
this is this is the proving grounds. You know, um, we we are freedom fighters. We are revolutionaries, and uh, we we have to make it work. I, I don't I don't dedicated my life. It's this is do or die for me, uh, and I'll be doing this until I'm six feet under in I, the grave. Well, well perfect, so, uh, uh, Ebo, uh, perfect. No, I'm a fighter. Uh, you know. What I want you to do now is uh, just give us some updates about the office there that we have there in Jahadzi. Uh, the update is uh, we've uh, we've uh, secured a place, secured this place here for for a year. Uh, the office is uh, is up and running. Uh, we do need we do need furniture. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to uh, ride the rough parts out until until we can get to the point to where we can afford furniture. But uh, it's workable. We have we've had clients come through here. Um, uh, uh, I, I think I, I lost count at uh, about seven or eight. You know, uh, clients in the in the last year has, has come through here. And, uh, I, and I think that there are there are more scheduled to come, uh, but the office is uh, is is uh, very is is huge. It's basically it's huge. Uh, three bedroom. Uh, uh, what what we do is uh, I just had our brother Ed brother Ed paid for. Uh, this is a Jahazi Estates. Uh, brother Ed paid for. His unit, uh, same as ours, three bedroom, uh, two bath uh, unit uh, for his, his family. His his plot is across the street from from this office, and we got this office as a convenient for our clients, people that are interested in buying land over at uh, Black Star Pan African Community. Um, we have we've had people that come over here. You know, before before this office, they had to ride all the way to uh, from uh, Accra. Uh, they had they had to ride from Cape Coast uh, uh, to to come and see their property, and they spent hours. They spent more hours driving to to the property than to get to the property to to stay on the property to view their land. But uh, this is a whole lot more convenient. By having an office here, it's more convenient for the clients. And uh, if the clients want to move their family in before their house is built, that's a convenience. You know, uh, this is this is uh, it's, it's it's really it's really uh, uh, an ingenious way of uh, dealing with the land. You know. You got an office. You got a it's sort of like a real estate office. Plus, uh, you're living here. You're living here. You're living on on the uh, in the estate. It's right across the street. Your house is being built right across the street from the estate. So, so uh, that's an update and an upgrade as far as uh, our, our situation is concerned. We have to learn how to control our our conditions. In our situation, in, in in order to make things better for for all of us, you know, uh, you know, uh, is there is there anything else uh, you need to know about uh, the uh, uh, update on the, this office? Well, Aziba, appreciate it, brother. Thanks uh, for the uh, uh, details. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, so uh, family, uh, that's uh, Vice President Azibo, and he is managing the uh, Black Star Pan African Community Office. Uh, so the main uh, thing of that office is for those who have purchased their plots, whenever you're ready, you'll see your land. Uh, you you uh, you can just go right there to see your plot, and uh, we'll have someone just uh, be able to show you it. And then uh, the main thing is for you to uh, we, you know we have a GPS link that we can send to you. Uh, so. You'd be able to find the office, and then you, you know when you take that two-hour drive, you can just go right there to the office. And once you're there at the office, you can use the restroom. You can sit down, uh, rest your foot, and uh, then you can take your journey to the land. 
And uh, while that office is being there, it's just uh, it's just something that we're building up from the ground up and things like that. So the goal is for us to use some of the uh, money uh, or the profits that we have and build it up little by little and things like that. Uh, this office that I have here, I use all my IT money to build from the ground up. So when I was ready to do Black Star Pan African Community, everything was already established here already based on Africa tour operation and the other things that I've done here and things like that. But the office that we have there is fresh from the ground up. So we have a good brother Azibo there and we have a secretary, uh, Cassandra there. And uh, we're looking to possibly get um, a maintenance, uh, maintenance personnel there uh, to do some of the maintenance. The backyard area needs to be cleaned up to where it looks presentable. And I'm trying to get everything settled and organized um, because we have a whole lot of people coming to visit both the 15 and 60 acres in December. And uh, also even a few months before that, it's gonna be an attraction where a lot of people are coming to, to visit. It's not a whole bunch of uh, groups of people who have uh, a good amount of land where you can just join that group and you can just get your land and get your land papers and not have a whole bunch of hassle. And as of uh, last month and this month, we have perfected that situation. And then as of, you know, at the three uh, year mark, we'd have a whole lot more in place to where we're gonna be able to just do this to, you know, even more sim you know, even simpler. Uh, but it takes you going through all these things to get it done. And in Ghana, if you just plan on getting all of these things done at one time or get it done in a short period of time, good luck. It's not going to happen. You're going to just end up just getting frustrated to where nothing gets done. But the way we have ingeniously gotten everything done, including the office there, it's little by little just putting things in place and trying to figure it out. Uh, so I just want everybody just to stick with the program and... Um, then just honestly, you know, uh, all the things that need to be done, I'm just working on what I can work on because I don't want to stress anybody out about doing anything. But for the people who are asking me about roads and things like that, you know, those are the, those are the automatic volunteers to do the road project, uh, basically. And once again, it includes researching on uh, road materials, the sequence of how it's done, and um, also funding and definitely who is going to literally do the communication between the people that we need to communicate with. Uh, so if we're trying to build a road from uh, the main road right there where we are, where the uh, Jahaji estate is, all the way up to our land, uh, a lot of people have to get involved. The chief and myself is fine with whatever we decide to do, but at the same time, too, it involves other people. All right, so family, I don't want to go into this too long. wanted to see... Uh, if anyone would like to unmute themselves, uh, turn their video on and uh, uh, share something. So Kwame Asante, you've been one of the group members for a long time and you have seen how we've been putting this together little by little. And now we're talking about uh, making sure that someone like yourself, when you're ready to come, we, we get residency in place for you. Um, and, you know, and then from there on, you know, you, uh, you can you get your Ghana card, even though you don't need residency to get that. But when you get there now, your bank account, your mobile money, all the things that you need to function in Ghana, your Ghana, you know, register in your Ghana phone, you'll be able to do those things. And, you know, only thing that we haven't been able to get done now will be citizenship. So I'm telling people little by little, uh, we, we're getting it done and things like that. And so now you're ready to go over to Ghana now. There's a lot more things clearer. You can actually go to your land. You already have your land papers already. So as a matter of fact, you're one of the people that and when we're getting a, a bunch of land papers done, uh, to, you know, you, yours are part of it. So hopefully you now you can get to see your land for the first time and then be ready to build. But anyway, my brother, uh, I just want you to give an introduction of yourself and then uh, share your journey of connecting with Black Star Pan-African community and how confident you feel now about what we're doing. All right, everybody. I'm, oh, let me make sure y'all hear me well. Is it okay? Right. Hear you loud and clear. All right, okay, everybody. I'm uh, Kwame Asante. Uh, formerly, well, formerly, maybe or something, formerly known as uh, Derek Word, um, based out of um, Atlanta. Uh, I've been riding on the, the journey with Bo Money since 2000, July 2011. That was my first time uh, leaving the country. I was uh, 29 years old then. And so that was a trip of a lifetime. I mean, I'd never been to the Caribbean, never been to Mexico, never been anywhere around the world. So I wanted to make it a, uh, a point or a spiritual point or a, a, a milestone is what, what I would call it, uh, to make it a special moment for me to take my first trip, I decided to go to Africa. I did not know that I was gonna go about money, but I did um, 
as I was traveling around, I started driving trucks probably two years before that, three years before that. So I was traveling throughout the country. And um, I so happened to come across a bookstore. I think it was, wasn't Barnes and Noble, but it was uh, books and, one of those bookstores. But I bought a book that had all the different countries in Africa, all the different requirements and everything like that. So I came back to, to Atlanta about two months later during the summertime, and I it was holding a, a festival in Atlanta called the Malcolm X Festival. And so money so happened to have a booth up. And it, was just, uh, it was just like divine intervention. Uh, when I seen that banner he had on the front, Africa for the African tour of the Africa, I had to go over and I made an introduction and uh, asked him a few questions, um, grabbed the flyer. And I think it was about four, four, four months later, I gave him a deposit of $400 and that's when my journey began. And I went on that tour the following year and uh, that, that, that tour changed my life. Um, we got the tour around the entire country, 12 days on the ground. Uh, I saw some things that I never seen, uh, culture, substance, the people, the kindness, the friendliness, and I, I got a sense of what uh, freedom really tastes like. And I never had that in the States. You know, the States has always been a hostile environment for me and many of the people that look like me. So I always had said to myself, when I get the opportunity to travel like some other people that I know, family members, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it. Um, you know, I'm going to change my whole life. I'm going to live outside of the States and get out of this oppressive, non-productive society. So that my journey started in 2011. Um, and then I went back uh, in 2015. On another tour with more money with Africa, with the Africans, and that just gave me a confirmation of, to where it told me basically to myself. I told myself like, "Hey, this is a place for me. I can do this, um, and everything is just what I but what I've seen is just to be that exact." And I went back in 2019 on a solo trip right before COVID. I think it was July 2019, and I wanted to go alone so I could get around and see how it is in different uh, different regions that I went to prior. And uh, I want to go back and uh, just kind of do my research, get on the ground and do some recon reconnaissance to see how everything flows day to day living. So that I spent about three weeks then. So um, and I made a decision then I said, uh, I'm moving, you know, so COVID hit. That was out of my control or you know, out of anybody's control. So I promised myself, I said, when COVID is uh, finished and the borders open back up. I'm, I'm going to make it a point and a commitment to put a sense of urgency uh, to getting on the ground and getting myself established and get a foothold in there and build my life, my new life and build a foundation. And that way, uh, when the world shuts down, I don't have to worry about nothing like that. I can be home, uh, secure, you know, with security and everything else and surrounded by people that look like me because I don't know if any of you guys were in the States at this time, but it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare being here. And um, I would never want to experience that again, being around all these different people, all these white supremacists all around these racist cops and you just locked in this place with these type of people. So it just gave me more of an importance and a sense of urgency to go with the project like um, uh, Jahatsi uh, or Black Star, because that, that again, that's independence. That's, uh, that's security, that's, every, that's culture, that's everything nation building, that's everything that we should be doing. And I, I really did get, get, the, get a glimpse of what that feels like. I've been on lockdown. Why it's important for us to have that community and work with a group and to learn the skills that we are learning the information that we're being provided with, we're being provided with on every conference call, it literally has changed my life because I can, I can look at things from a whole different perspective now. Anywhere I'm at in the world, I could say, man, I can have a great, great appreciation of how land is developed, how infrastructure goes in, plumbing and electricity, uh, how commercial buildings are built, how residential is built, because I got the information from Black Star. So it's a life changing experience. Like I said, again, I respect people in general for nation building and governments for what they do now and people builders and all type of skill sets because this thing, it takes a lot of uh, diligence and uh, uh, manpower and sweat equity to do what people do on a day-to-day -day basis to have residential homes and all the stuff it takes to build nations. So by being with Blackstar, I probably get to, well, definitely get to experience some of those things. So I can say to anybody, hey, if you wanna be part of something and you wanna nation build, this is where you go because there's a lot of a lot of different groups around that you'll find on um, people talking about, oh, we're moving back, Pan-Africanism, and we're repatriating back to the continent. But you'll find out if they're not really productive, you can't really go over there with three or four people and get anything done because you don't have any manpower, sweat equity. And you'll find out that people are just really going over there just on some individualistic stuff, just to say that they're, that they're there and they're not, they don't have a plan. But uh, I can say with Bo Money's group, it, it's perfectly fit. And it's not what so much what he has to offer or the group has to offer, but it's what you're going to do with the uh, opportunity at hand, the information that comes to you. How are you going to take that and how are you going to mobilize? So, again, my experience has been positive regardless of what people say. And they try to uh, 
uh, uh, slander the group and everything like this based on some minor minute things, I got to give it a thumbs up. So I wouldn't change it for the world. And that's why I'm, I'm consistently participating because again, I've seen my life enhanced over the last 10, 11 years since I went. I have a sense of confidence now uh, to where I have my cultural identity back, something that I've always lacked. I feel like I've lacked inside of my mind and in and, 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 and the States and I have that back now. So I feel like I cannot be stopped now. Everything goes forward, forward from here. You know what I'm saying? And not gonna let COVID stop us, anything like that. It's just a positive experience. So like I said, again, I'm in, I'm in this, like uh, um, uh, Baba said, uh, he in this to the day he's leaving this earth and I'm in the, in the same thing. I don't wanna li live under the rulership of any other people anymore. I'm, I'm tired of that. When I have family and kids, they're gonna be free in the motherland. So again, this is, uh, this is my vision from this day forward. I'm gonna stick with it. So that's my, that's my uh, experience with uh, Africa for the Africans and, and being in Africa and, and uh, traveling to Ghana. And then I went on to, also went on a tour in 2020 to uh, Tanzania, Tanzania. And that was, a, uh, that was definitely a plus. So I made it to win it, man, so. Absolutely, brother, appreciate you. And I appreciate the, you know, breaking it down. So family, uh, you know, the people who have traveled and connected with us, uh, you know, we'll put our energy together and uh, we have, uh, you know, stand the test of time and stand um, all the obstacles. And now we're here to this, that you know that, um, you, know, you, know, you know, we're stronger than ever and we're ready to start building and enterprising. And we're just looking for more people who wanna get involved. If they wanna build apartments, if they wanna do any kind of industrial development, uh, we have everything worked out to where we can just get the land papers together. And then next thing you know, that's five acres of land right there and you're building an apartment complex. Uh, so we've done all of the rough, hardcore work to where uh, when people invest and connect with us, they, they don't have to go through those things anymore. You know, I had a whole administrative team, attorney, consultant, and other people, and we literally worked this thing for, you know, for almost three straight years. So that's how we got it done. It wasn't magic and it wasn't divine intervention or any of those things. It was just literally tactical operation, literally just putting your best efforts and your best people together to get this done. So brother Kwame, appreciate you joining our journey from Africa tourists to Africa investment, straight pan-African nation building. That's what we're doing family. So uh, if you wanna join a winning team, if you wanna join those of us that's making it happen, come on in now because unfortunately it's one of those situations where 95% of people talk about this black power and pan-Africanism, they, they're joking. They're just, they're saying it, they're not, they're not really doing it. But the world, the goal is to live that life. You see a zebra right there. A man sacrificed all kinds of things and he run in the Black Star office right there in Jahadi. And I think he's the only person literally that have stand this test of more than two months there. <laughs> Everybody that have taken your position, brother, have literally fallen and failed and have ran back into the alley where they came from. <laughs> you did, you did, you out there. I gotta get to you, brother. You out there. It's it's hard, it's a hard knock life. And I'm telling people the same thing. I'm here in the office. Yeah, whenever I'm not on tour, I'm just here. And it's like days go by, you know, you just feel like, a, a, you know, this days go by, but it's like, these are the things that has to get done in order for us to build this nation that we're talking about. It's like, I hear all these stories about black folks and then the Americas talking about Africa. And I'm like, what Africa are you talking about? Africa that you didn't build anything in that you're going to go to. So I want to see more of us move there uh, and move to the different parts of Africa, uh, you know, whether it's Ghana and whatever country, but let's make sure that, you know, we keep that bridge going. Those who can be there, you're there, and those who could be over here getting whatever else resource is working. So that's what Black Star has, you know, we have, you know, working this thing on all, all across all angles, not just, you know, so that's what you know, this family and, and our information is documented all online. And if people are talking about you, that means you're doing something good. So I appreciate all the, you know, all the people who give us all of their, you know, they said everything that they've said and now they're eating their words and things like that, you know, and things, you know, and so on. So our uh, family, uh, we've been doing this and still our whole house is going up, the community is going up and, you know, we have little to no drama and problems, or I should say none. Uh, so, and then anything that have come our way, we have been able to survive through. So looking for the next person to share, Brother Prince, uh, you're, you're also right there in Ghana live and direct, uh, reaching out to see if you can give us some updates on how things are in Ghana and how you can make your way from the Americas to Ghana and be okay.
And then after that, my good brother Nakuma, you're next after um, Brother Prince. Uh, if you are open to sharing your experience here in Ghana. All right, so Prince, you're unmuted. Um, you, you don't want to show your, your, your pretty face? <laughs> no, not showing no face. I'm undercover. You're undercover? Hey, you know, yeah, I'm undercover, brother. You know, women love true revolutionaries, man. So you show your face, man. You may get a whole bunch of marriage proposal. Now, the marriage proposals, they're there for the wrong reason to flee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's so they can get married. Are, are you saying you think somebody may want to get married to you because they want to come to America? Exactly. They want to flee. You know <laughs> I, how that works already, right? Well, you have to find a sister that wants to put in the work and stay and build the country. Well, the floor is yours, brother. And uh, yeah, share what you want to share. As you know, one of our main uh, you know, board members and you know, true brothers that's living there and living the life in Ghana. And I uh, well, you open your home to allow me and my crew to come in there and just hang out with you on two occasions there in oh, Ghana. Sure. Anytime, my brother. I can't wait for you to come back again so we can do it all over. Oh, absolutely. Man. You know, every time I'm there, man, I come visit you, man. You're my, you know, you're my brother for life. Brother, the only thing that we might just have to just sort of like um, find a new eating spot because, I mean, like the jam rock, man, I don't know where all those taxes come from. Hey, I mean, look, two times I've been to jam rock. My bill was over 1,200 CDs. I'm not lying, man. I can't believe it. You know, it's a recording well, call also. It's, after it's, it's huh? a recorded call. So don't say nothing. Huh? It's recorded. It's a recorded call. But uh, go ahead. The floor is yours, though. Yeah. So... You know, all I could say is like, uh, anybody coming out here to live, man, you're gonna have to have some patience, you know, cause things don't always go the way you're used to it going. And um, just as simple as like, your water can go out, your power can go out, you know, the roads are in a state. And so, you know, you really have to be humble and patient. And, when you go to places, you don't always get the customer service as what you're accustomed to in the States. So sometimes you literally be really frustrated and you just really want to give up and come home. But, you know, um, you, you just really have to be patient living out. You just, you just have to be. If, if you don't, well, you're just not going to cut it. Here. But other than that, other than those little minor issues, it, it, I'm happy out here, and uh, I think a lot of brothers and sisters come out here because they just find a sense of being free here, you know? You're not there as a black man or a black woman, you're just a person here, you're just a human being. Whereas being in the West, you're always the black man or you're always the black woman, and you always have a freaking target on your back all the time. But here, you're just a normal human being, everyone looks just like you. And I'll say this too, the colonizing white devils, when you're out here, they behave themselves. They don't really try to cause no trouble or make no waves because they will get checked here. They will because out here, if you have any issue with white folks, you can't just pick up the phone and call the cops like that. They ain't coming. They don't work like that. Even if you get sick, you might call the ambulance. They may not just come as, as fast as you may would like them to come. So, you know, you kind of really, even sometime when you're living in Accra, you kind of like have to be self-sufficient to a certain degree. But yeah, um, I love it here. Once you can get over those few, you know, inconveniences with the power and the water and the bad roads and the bad customer service, it's, it's, it's a nice country to be. And I feel like, you know, we can contribute and make the country better rather than all these Lebanese and Asians and white devils coming in. So, you know, I, I think it's a good thing, you know? So just come here and uh, be open-minded and patient. It's gonna take time for things to get to the level where you're accustomed to back in the States. All right, well, perfect. Uh, let folks know about uh, all the things that, that they need. Uh, you know, we are talking earlier, uh, before we did the recorded call about uh, residency and Ghana card. Oh, okay. Well, basically, 
you come out here and you got, you know, a few weeks to spare, you can get your residency, you know, you can you can hook that up from the States for them, you know, but it, you should at least be here for at least a month minimum. You can get your residency and after you get your residency, you go down to a place called Shiashi to get your Ghana card. You get your Ghana card. If you go early, you could probably get in about an hour or, or an hour and a half. And once you got your Ghana card, you can get uh, a SIM card so you can have phone service. Um, and you can also open a bank account. Pretty much in Ghana, you're going to need a Ghana card to do everything. Right. And also, let's get some clarity on the Ghana card. Family, you can get a Ghana card without a residency. The thing that you need a residency, I know for sure, and correct me, brother, is uh, when you're ready to get a mobile money account, that way you can just have digital money on your phone, uh, your phone account. And also, if you decide to open up a bank account, if you don't have the residency, those two things are not happening. But uh, once you get your Ghana card, you can use your Ghana card to do everything else. Yeah, well, for instance, me, um, I actually had my residency first. I was told that I needed to have my residency first. So I don't know if you could get it before you have the residency. That I don't, I'm not a customer. Uh, is that Kamal? That I don't know about. Is that Kamal did it? Uh, oh, but, he did? Uh, but, what, but the key thing we want everyone to understand is that eventually the residency, which I mean, bank account and mobile money, that, that's your money moving around. So if you live in there, you're going to need to get that done. But yeah. You can't get away with just being you know, a tourist uh, and things like that. But uh, when it comes to the legal paperwork and all that stuff, um, yeah. again, at least have your Ghana card ready and then use that to register everything. And I think that should be good. Uh, so, and then when eventually anyone who wanted to live there, because in order to get passports, I think what we best thing we could do is just work the residency for like a few years and then we can get passports legally. Just, yeah. Uh, but beyond well, that, well, here's what I know, right? Like here in Ghana, they like asking for ID a lot. Like when I came with you back in 2020, um, the Ghana card wasn't really on the table properly yet, but is when after the tour, it started to roll out slowly. Even though the Ghana card, as far as I know, people have been getting it for some time now, but it just wasn't really open to uh, people outside of the country at, the, at that point. But when I uh, extended my time, I was told that I need to get a Ghana card. And that's what I did. And um, the Ghana card allowed me to get, a, to, to, to get my SIM card registered. And it also allowed me to open a bank account because I tried to open a bank account multiple times. And every time I would go to the bank, not only would they ask me for a Ghana card, they were asking me for a TIN number. But the funny thing about it, come the first of April, or the first either the first of April or the first of March of last year, they stopped issuing uh, tin numbers. So I went to several banks and they wouldn't open a bank account for me, even though I had a Ghana card. I said, "Look, you, you need to have a tin number." I said, "The government stopped issuing tin numbers." So I went to a specific bank and they opened it for me, but. They like asking for ID here. They really do for everything. They like asking you for your ID. Every time you go to the bank, they want ID and everything. Um, when you go to the phone store, if you have any issues with your phone or with your fiber broadband or whatever, they like to ask for your ID. It's so perfect. So <laughs> run it back again so we can let everybody know what they need to have to get a Ghana bank account because if we're going to be there, you're going to need to get your money sent over via bank. Yeah. You know I me. Mean? I'm you're gonna people, need like to, for, for you to open a bank account. You're gonna need your residency and a Ghana card. They won't open it just with a Ghana card only. You have to have a a, um, a Ghana. You have to have a residency because see, Ghanaians they either show their passport or voter's ID or a driver's license or even a birth certificate. They can show those things, but you can't show your U.S. passport no more. That's just not gonna cut it. They want to see a Ghana card and a residency stamped in. It's just a way of tracking you so they know who you are. You see, they they say it's for identification and to prevent fraud. I'll just leave it at, like that really, but you but know. It's, uh, also, it's also a business, dude, because I mean, 
I mean, I don't remember paying one hundred twenty dollars for my driver's license here, but you know, I got eight years on that, and that that I got one year on. So, it's also you know, all this is you know, it's a money making entity. Yeah, yeah, it is. Business. It is the business. Um, You're right. Everything is a business here. They don't do anything unless they, they there's some monetary value to it. You know, and but that's also a way uh, you boost your economy, and as long as you reinvest that money in the right situation. Uh, but uh, you know, I wanted to get that done because uh, you know, there's a bunch of things I needed to get done, and I literally wasn't was, was not gonna be able to get it done without the residency and the um and the bank, the residency and the Ghana card. So that's one of the things that we just want to make sure we educate all members about. Uh, about yeah. residency and Ghana card, and also just want to make sure that people are clear on it because as yeah. we travel back and forth to Ghana, and the people that I have that's going back and forth, we're consistently going to uh, updates on things. One of the biggest uh, thing came up was there was some drama about a year ago about about so-called foreigners because you know I don't even like people how people call us foreigners. Foreigners are Lebanese and Chinese and Indians, and I'm a uh, I'm a native-born son of African that was stolen and I'm back back is stronger than ever. Uh, um, uh, but, but it's like one, you know one of those situations where you just you know where you just you're you know you're you're, you're back and it's just ways how people could make certain money so uh, you know but the good thing about it is you know the process of the country is growing to where things are a lot more organized because when I look at the card you know it's an official you know it's official card but the problem is a lot of us were getting land and things like that. And they were asking if some of us are residents. And, and then, you know, when we tell them no, and they was like, how can this guy like Bomani go and go get all his acres of land? And how can the chief do all this deal? There was no law against those things. And even when I was uh, talking to two, you know, uh, you know, talking to two detectives, I was, I was talking to them about a situation about uh, how, you know, how we're trying to do certain things. And they're trying to explain to me about what can be done and what can be done. And things like that, but it's like the laws of things just keep on changing. So by the time, like I remember, I opened up an investment account in Treasury Bills in 2009, and I remember signing up for an incorporation with two Ghanaian partners. And the things that you go to the country, you try to do to learn how the system work, and things like that. And I remember this being able to just do, transfer money into that account as investment as an investment account, and I was able to do everything that I was able to do in Ghana. I've been able to do it with a U.S. passport. Now, you know, I do understand the change over of it, and you know, people may be listening to this call later on and and be saying uh, different things about us and things like that. And you tell people, you know what? When you set out to do these things, you're trying to do your best about how to do it. You know, I, I remember getting like three Ghana visas before I even got residency because I was never able to stay in the country more than like 30 days. And you know, you're figuring it out and things like that and it's like why are you why are you trying to figure that out you have other things that you have to deal with so i'm just proud to let people know that we can help them with a hundred percent of the whole process of being here in america not having even a u.s passport to go into ghana and getting all the things that you need to have and having your land legally you know, turn my video on it and having the land legally set up for you to where you can just live happily ever after and this enjoy your investment uh, so those things are just don't get done overnight or just get done like that. You know, we have to just put these things in place. And in order for us to get the rest of the things going, like in order for us to get that office, Azibo, you okay, brother? Hopefully you're good. Um, but if you need to turn your video off, video off, you can turn your video off also. Uh, I know it may save some bandwidth. Uh, but if you have anything to share, you can also unmute yourself. But uh, the, most of what you uh, mentioned earlier, Azibo, was uh, good. So Appreciate you, but I know you guys probably have things there to do in Jihadzi. Uh, but thank you for definitely for the update. But if you want to stick around, you can also stick around on the call. But money, I, I have a question, but money. Go ahead. And maybe you can answer this or other one, other people on the call can. During COVID, when COVID at the borders closed on each country, I remember Ghana and other countries were starting to let they before the borders are closed, they was allowing citizens and um I think that were they're allowing residents to come in as well before they close the border, because uh, I'm trying to think of the benefits, not only the residents would open a bank account, but if I'm not mistaken, they gave priority to residents as well, uh, letting them into the border. Is that true, Bob, Baba, or anybody, Prince? You, uh, yes, remember abs that? Absolutely, because you're a resident of the country. You know, that means uh, you reside in the country, you're living in the country. So even though people like myself, you know where I live at already, but it's, you know. Right. 
like you know you can live in two places at one time as a, as a resident also even uh, so that's the key thing um other than that if you're not a resident you're uh, you know a visa visitor uh so okay so uh, it's a very important that's a that's a very important factor when it comes to being under siege and being in the places where like the situation we are in the in the United States is that having residency at the minimum, not even citizenship yet, if it's not available, but residency, because then you have a, a place to take refuge in, a legal place to take refuge in. And so that's why I put a high emphasis on us having that place of refuge and because the, the environment we live in is such hostile environment. But if we can have an ace in the hole is what you call it, right? An ace in the hole, like residency, that is, that's priceless. I mean, I would pay $10,000 to get it if that's the case, right? You know, so. That's why we put importance on these type of things, residency and citizenship, because again, you gotta have a place of refuge or you're just gonna be in the house of the enemy, right? So Absolutely. I just and then, um, bring that point up. Should give you access to legal land ownership and things like that. So it's a, it's a little tricky, but at the same time too, I'm telling anyone, there's no pressure for anyone to do these things. The most important thing everybody get is always still a Ghana visa, because that's the start. Everything else is a plus. But uh, and then then as you need certain things, you get things as you need. And as the laws of each country and the country are changed, you know, you do what you need to do. And then the goal is eventually to get everybody, you know, um, the, you know citizenship. That's the goal. I mean, I've heard people say certain things, but the best thing that we can do as Black Star Pan-African community is to run our own entity to where we can get all the things done in our own group. Because we have, it's, I mean, we have strength and numbers on our side always. That's one of the things that I've always just come with, you know, uh, a, a whole group of us coming together and just making things happen. So with that, uh, we do our lobbying as we need to do, and we'll get our members uh, citizenship. Those are things I can promise us, especially with more and more of us being residents. So that's also one of those things. So it's, you know, and, and as more people come in, you know, just like we have, just like trying to get more people to live there, just like in that estate, you know, we have one uh, family that's moved there already. It took the game plan on what we talk about and appreciate your brother Azebo. Azebo was an integral part of that because he's there. So now somebody needs a unit, you know, he go up and talk with management, the management put that in a hole, we send the money and next thing you know, they have that unit uh, and then they, they can move their family there. Uh, so we're working it brother, little by little, we're getting, uh, we're getting there. And then all of the people uh, that have built that estate across those are people that are going to offer their their skills, that offer their um, their resources to us. So um, you know, so you know, by us even investing in that area and doing business with them, you know, you're building a relationship to where it goes beyond, you know. Now you know you're doing. You know, it's always easier to deal with people when you're doing business with them. Now, like I find it easier for for me to deal with the people that I do business with versus strangers. Now, I mean, naturally, it should you know be that way, but. Uh, because, you know, you're dealing with people that you have a relationship built with. Uh, so that's what Azebo is there doing. He's the mastermind of that operation there. Uh, he's uh, going to help you move and get your family over there to Ghana. And um, the way we've been doing it, it's been like simple. Um, but uh, that's what it is, family, based on experience. So Anyone that's looking to make this move, looking to get land, just reach out to us, family. We're always doing conference call, we're always talking. And as you can see, whatever we do, we always sharing because we have nothing to hide and things like that. So even though it's a private call with our group, we're going to share it publicly. And then you can always uh, call me directly or send messages. So what I want to do is just open up for the other members. Um, the last um, person I saw physically was Filson. Filson, let me know if you're available. Uh, and then I think Nakuma is muted. Uh, Nakuma, if you can hear me, uh, go ahead and uh, just um, say something. All right, Nakuma, it sounds like uh, yourself. Are, are you there? All right, cool. Maybe uh, maybe some aliens took over his computer or something. All right, Philson, uh, Steve, uh, Sahida, Prince, anyone else? Uh, the well, I'll give a little bit of advice again, too. Like, if anybody wants to purchase anything in Ghana or rent an apartment or, or you know, 
do any kind of business. I don't think it's wise for them to send any money to Ghana. They should just be there and do it because, you know, it's, it's like this. It's easy for people to uh, misrepresent things easily in, in Ghana. And they will say, yeah, I will do this. And you send the money and you don't get what you paid for. And getting back your money in Ghana after you parted with it, you could forget it. Yeah, and, and that's why me and Azibo is running a brokerage firm where we just, you know, we yeah. just run an operation and we, you need if, to, pay, to pay us. If, 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 if they need to rent an apartment from the Jihadzi apartments, yeah, they maybe could send the money to you and you forward it to Azibo, but just to send our money to a, a local person here, I don't recommend it because there's just no way. If, if things just go south, you're not going to get your money back. It's just not going to get your money back. Once people take your money here, it's gone for good. And you won't be able to find them either. But if, if, if they want to come and live in the Jihad Sea Estates, they can send you the money and you can wire the money to a Zebo. It will be safe. Absolutely, bro. And that's what, we, that's what we've been doing, man. You know, we got this thing down pack. As even yeah, though we've been working it, man, getting things done. <laughs> yeah. if, if you wire money, if you wire money to a local person, <laughs> just count that you made a, a early Christmas present. For <laughs> you just gave the person a Christmas present. Because I, 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 I made the mistake and gave somebody 50 CDs to go got, buy something for me. The person disappeared for, for one and a half months. <laughs> like ten ten dollars maybe the person bounced for like a month and a half and when i saw the person again they act like they didn't even take my money they act like nothing didn't happen so okay you know that's how you test people some of the time you know but i don't i don't advise no one to send any money to anybody how, 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 uh -huh. how are the gas prices when you when there do you see do you guys hear a lot of people complaining or yeah. because i know i know in ghana people people don't really drive the distance like they do in the western hemisphere like gas is more expensive though <laughs> a whole lot more Ooh -wee. like ten dollars a gallon <laughs> Equi equivalent to a ten dollars a gallon in the yes, state Will you step on it? Gas is more expensive here. Ah, uh, yes. Those who feels it knows it. You know, I gotta fill that whole bus up <laughs> around the country. <laughs> you see, I don't drive, so I don't really know about the gas because I don't really study that. Well, all I know is that bus was drinking gas. It probably was old raggedy ass bus, though, huh? Yeah. Right. If any, if anybody in the future needs anything, because I'm an auto broker, I got that last year during March. So if you guys, anybody needs when they hit the ground or before they do any type of off-terrain vehicles like Jeep, especially the Jeep. I think the Jeep is an ideal vehicle. Uh, I know a pickup truck, but Jeeps is especially idea. It could be older Jeeps. And I know customs, it costs a different, you know, import duty tax. And I know they ban cars over 10 years and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know if they updated it, but if you need any type of any type of vehicle, a car, uh, SUV, uh, Jeep, let me know because I can go to the auction anywhere in, in the States and take care of the whole process of buying and exporting everything to the continent. So let me know anybody. I hey, think- How about, you know, how about a, a helicopter? <laughs> you can do that too. That's at the auction as well, yeah. That's what we need there in Ghana, just fly over to Jahazi land. Yes, hey, yes, Kwame. planes and whatever, yeah. Kwame, you know the Ford have a nice truck out now. The Ford Maverick is a hybrid. Does like about 40 miles to the gallon. It's a hybrid pickup. If you give me the dimensions, I can find exactly what you need. The mm -hmm. leather, whatever interior, paint, engine size, let me know it. I can, I can search all on the, the yeah. website. because I, I use two websites called Mannheim. Those are the two biggest options in Adasia. And I can search their database and pull up photos. I can email them. Whatever it takes, I'll do the research. Yo, so Prince, all we got to do is go get that bag of money, Prince, and then you know, we give it give it to him, and then we a whole bunch of cars, and we get into the auto yes. auto operation, and then you no. Know, yeah. 
Then we build a maintenance facility and a Zebo running. Yeah. Quality, yeah. All terrain vehicle. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, and then, you know, but but even more important, we need some some, some road machines. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I I see a lot of those too. I, when I make my delivery, I deliver oh, trucks throughout the state. Man. I see all kind of small um uh, uh road paving equipment where you got you know how you have the big rollers, the big ones they sit on on the highways, but I also see the ones that you can push and the small ones that you can ride. Probably don't cost nothing. I've looked at the auction, five six thousand dollars, you know, and so you could. All that construction equipment is is available at a good decent price, you know, at the auctions, you know, good prices. Absolutely, brother. So we have one question about membership. So Saida, just unmute yourself, and anyone else have any questions? The same thing. Just unmute yourself, and then we just go through it before we close. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Hi, everyone. Okay. So my question is, if you have if you plan on, okay, like for me, I'm planning to uh, build a home and then um, an orphanage. Is there, is it one membership fee or do I have to pay two because it's another property? No, uh, it's just one membership fee. The, the rest of the land that we have, as far as like maintenance building, uh, land that people are going to build projects like orphanage and things, is this all like for us as, you know, to benefit the community and benefit our outreach? So it's, it's nothing extra. And some of those land are not even, there's no cost on it. It's just land we have available for us to build something. Uh, so there's no cost, no fees, no nothing. Uh, the fact that everybody put money on purchase a lot and got it registered and pay those things. We just need one person, you know, people to at least do one of those things and then get access to all that stuff. We're going to get access to, uh, to land, especially for development. So you know, it's one of those unique things when we just control our own operation, we can just make it work for us. Okay, that's cool. Now, can I ask, you can tell me no, and <laughs> I respect it. Can I ask about other members' membership? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay, all right, that's fine. No, okay. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. Not everybody is, uh, I can give an update, but not everybody has paid membership full for you know, the $300 a year uh, and it's just one of those unfortunate things where you have to go around and keep calling people, but uh, trying to get people to do that uh, the beginning of the year and also the next time is uh, actually this month right now, uh, month number six. So it's one one fifty for six month or three hundred per year. Uh, so some people have paid, some people have not. But as far as giving you like exact status, that'll be no, no, no. Okay, so since you mentioned what you just said. I just want to ask this question, if I may. Sure. If people are not paying their membership, and I know we all have hardships in life, everyone, how do you expect them to build in our community? Yes, that's always another, that's another story. Uh, so some people literally, honestly, are not uh, serious as they say, um, but uh, you, you're dealing with people from someone this this putting the deposit down to people who have or who are, who are built their homes and you're dealing with it from that range and you're trying to just work with people and as serious people come along those people will be replaced with those people and then you know you just work a deal out to get them their money back or certain things but uh, you know you know the process has to go on no one can sit on the land for like three five years or more and things like that uh, so all those things are in the, uh, the overview that everybody signed so uh, push come to shove, you know, they just, those people little by little will be relegated to phase two and, you know, we just do what we need to do, but it's a process of trying to deal with it. It's, it's, it's difficult to, to really say, you're just trying to work with people and trying to figure it out. Unfortunately, this is just that. So some of those people, they may rise up and some of them, they may just be wasting our time the whole time. Okay. Now, okay. So for the orphanage to be built, would that be in phase two or phase three? Where can uh, it be? Phase two, uh, there's a 60 acre layout that I put phase together. Two. So uh, can, a, can an orphanage be built like a house or it has to be more of a business life? That could be built like a house or it could be, be built as a you know, commercial sector, but uh, either or work. There's no, there's no like, um, the good thing about that area, there's no they don't have the same code and code system and with it, you know, I'm sure it will change over the future of time, but 
um, you can build, you know, you can just build a home, build a, a home that look, and make it an orphanage or make it a big home, whichever way you feel to just work it or build it more for like a school that would also work. Oh, okay. I mean, that's good. Um, so I'm thinking about changing my mind as far as, because originally I said I wanted to build a home first, but I think I want to build an orphanage first. Yeah, the, the only difference is that, okay? that, well, that, that's fine. The only difference is that land with the 60 acres, we're still paying on it. The 15 acres is paid in full and then the, the registration process is, is you, know, um, you know, it's going on. Uh, and then with this one, um, we have to work on a bunch of things from this getting a road built into the land and just trying to this. Okay, the re okay, so for December 2023, right? I'll have all the money to build the home or the orphanage. So what can be built first? If you're just saying you're still paying on the other one, you're telling me I have to build a home first then? Uh, the home can be built right away as far as the that land right there with the orphanage. I mean, the goal is to get more people to, to pay on it so you can pay for it and get you know, further into this, uh, being able to just have full access to it. Now, legally right now, uh, we have access to doing whatever we want to do on the land. But uh, respectfully, uh, you know, uh, that's because the chief just, you know, we paid him, you know, we paid him a few, a few payments. And, uh, and I told him that we need, literally need to get all this stuff registered and legally put up before we just keep on paying for some more land. So that's how we got uh, in, even surveys in our name and everything. So legally, if, uh, if you had, uh, we had all the equipment and you wanted to build an orphanage, you're like right at this very, very moment, like now we could, mm -hmm. we could legally. Could, could now, not, right? No, we could, we can. We're, we're, that, that's so, that survey hey, in, in the name of Black Star community. So, uh, so once survey, we can build on the land. Okay, so if, if I'm ready to build the orphanage in, let's say, January of 2024, can it be done? Oh, uh, yes, because that's a long time from now. So oh, okay. Done. Um, and just trying to explain the legal flow of this, what's set up. We have two surveys, but I'm also like explaining to people what we paid for and what we didn't pay for. The 15 acres completely paid for, and the 60 acres is a few payments. And then, so, uh, and then this time we just have a chance to just register the 60 acres in heads up to where now when people are looking for the information, they just see it's registered already. Uh, so, you know, we've just been working it little by little from the ground up, and here we are. But um, okay. legally, whenever you're ready, we can do those. So things. that's fair. If I if it, if I can build it in uh, January 2024, I would rather do the orphanage before the home. So thank you. Yeah. So a lot of things we would have to just go on at that time, though. You know, we'd have to just get all the stuff cleared, set up, and get the land laid out like we have the current land. So a lot can happen in that time frame because right now that's the only land that's really space is available. So uh, we can you know, literally just get a whole lot done in that one year. Okay, so I, I want input from for the people that's on this call. Okay, so sh should I build the orphanage as a home, a four bedroom home, or a business? What's your input? And I'm open to it. Right. Is anybody going to respond? We all shy. Hold on, ask that question again. Repeat okay. that question. Okay. Um, I wanted everyone's input. Okay, so as far as for the orphanage, should it be built like a home or should it be built like a business? I mean, do you do you understand what I'm asking? Like a room, like a rooming house, you mean? Yeah. Is that the word? Should I build it in that type of um setup or like a home? No, uh, um an orphanage, uh, an orphanage is an institution, so it should be built like an institution. The orphanage are also homes and also commercial entities like schools. You know, so you have seen orphanage in different ways. So there, there's no limitation. You just and right now, since we have, we know we can kind of work the, the zoning as we need to zone it because, like I said, it's uncharted land, untapped land. And we're just building it from the ground up for the first time. So that area right there is the area where we can do a bunch of different things. And literally also this industrial development. So if we can get away with this building an orphanage, more like a, you know, a business setup, you know, it, it will all work. There's no limitation. It will all work. And okay. that's the main thing that we want to say because we don't want people to 
you know, like the last project we were working with Garvey Town, they told us we couldn't be, build no home bigger than like two floors. And it was just a bunch of uh, stipulations that were unnecessary because the thing of it is, is it's, we're the ones that come together and make the rules of what we need based on what we need for our community as a, as a people. Uh, then there's no zoning regulation that's gonna tell us certain things. And Aziba, when you get a chance, you can also check out the zoning, the, the, the places that does zoning uh, does that does zoning and also uh, keyword um, billing permits and things like that and see if they have an issue with these things and because Nana Haiti has already cleared us and let us already know our works there because that's his town so he's telling you that um, we basically just can build what we need to build with no limitations really and but at the same time too you know, we can't do a bunch of crazy stuff Okay, you answered my question. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hey, 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 hey by her mentioning it, something came to my 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 forethought. Um, something I've been watching recently is uh for the last few months is a container building. I never was really open to those type of container buildings, but Ghana is leading the way. Uh, uh there's a few uh good um, architecture companies over there that are actually taking those containers and doing a marvelous job on them. So when she mentioned about the orphanage, just one thing that popped in my head was one that I was watching about um, apartment building apartment building containers. And you guys, if you hadn't seen it, you would be amazed on what those containers, what they're capable of being, what's capable of being done, uh, do, done with those things. You can build apartments, you can build them stacked on top of one another, uh, side by side, you can do gyms, commercial buildings, whatever you wanna do, orphanages, it's an ec excellent eco-friendly way of building. Um, you can uh, knock the walls down. I mean, you can put balcony decks. So that's definitely something that uh, everyone should be open to because they can be outfitted for a good cheap price and uh, pre pre um, pre modified before being delivered on site. So that just came to mind. That came to my thoughts. Container building. I got a book on it also. I got a book also on the all the natural ways of building, but. Um, Container building is definitely on the top of the list uh, because of the uh, eco-friendliness of it. And no, they do not get extremely hot. Um, they have uh, installation and all that good stuff in the paint that goes on the outside to prevent all that extreme heat from penetrating through, those, through that metal. So definitely be open to that type of building also. Container building can be built in apartments come collected as well. Absolutely, brother. And we, what we have to do is get uh, people who can just get those things that are done for us in the most efficient and organized way. And I wish mm -hmm. you good to go. Uh, and you know, that's what I'm saying. All this just takes little by little. You just figure it out uh, as you go along. And by the time you finish, you, you honestly just have everything in place. And that's what we have right now. Uh, so we just need to add some more builders who can just do some of these container homes and some other homes and yes. put them to work. So brother Steve um, or Nikuma, anybody else have anything to share or say? Uh, no, nothing much for me. I just uh, listening and uh, taking everything in and uh, no, uh, nothing for me right now. All right, cool, perfect. Yes, yeah, so uh, we are just moving forward and keeping it strong. So as we, as we work on things, I will just keep everybody posted on our WhatsApp group. So just let everyone know this, uh, look out for any updates that we may post and things like that. So beyond that, there's, there's a lot of work to be done and we're just working on it. Those of us who are working on it and anyone else who wanna jump in family, the, it is an open party. You can join in and have as much fun as you want with any kind of work or research you want to do. Beyond that, um, you know, we're just here working on all of the priorities and we'll get to certain things little by little. So we open the next two years. A whole lot will be different and we're just building, 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 building. All right, so Azibo, anybody else, if you have any Final words, anything to share? Um, share it now or forever hold your peace because I am getting back into the phone call recruiting mode and a whole lot of work here to do. I was listening to Kwame uh, say, talk about uh, container. Uh, what about container? You know, it's, it's 
speak there. It's, it's, uh, there's there's a, a more uh, organic and natural approach to uh, sustainable uh, building, which is uh, or rammed earth. You would probably find out uh, what's going on on, on the black All right, Azibo, you're, we're not getting any consistency from your audio, unfortunately. Um, but, um, um, you know, you know, so uh, try to just to speak up this clear directly into the, the uh, your mic so we can hear you. Can... Yeah, I was talking about Kwame's uh, 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 his approach to uh, sustainable uh, living. Uh, we, we, Kwame, when you get a chance to look up uh, Earth ships, are you familiar with that? Yeah, we're familiar. The ram, the, the ram Earth the home technique or Earth ships is a different technique. Yeah, Earth ship is a different technique, but they're both uh, an organic approach to uh, sustainable building. Okay, I'll look that uh, up. Yeah. You know the the uh, containers. The containers is a, is more of a, a, a economic rather than ecological approach. You know, there's a difference between economics and ecological. Okay. You know. Uh, plus, uh, you know, you know that that metal when that metal gets hot. It'll, it'll take a it'll take a few days for that metal to cool down. You got to have insulation big time to keep that heat uh, at bay. When you're dealing with uh, um, uh, those those containers, once you're dealing with those containers, that then once that metal gets hot, it takes a while for it to cool down. So. You know, and that's that's what they got around here. You hardly you hardly see any glass in these these places around here, not unless you go to the higher end areas. You know where they have glass, but if you, if you really notice in, in, in the regular areas here in, in Ghana, the places the the places of businesses. They, don't, they have very little glass. That's because of the, those containers. They're using the containers to, uh, to to carry on their business, you know. That's basically what, what you're dealing with. You're dealing with, uh, a, it's, it's more of a makeshift type of thing. I, I've seen people do amazing things to uh, containers. But the way to go is is uh, organic, natural and organic. Uh, those containers are, are not organic. Not All right, uh, Zebo, appreciate you. I appreciate it. It's um, uh, and thanks for your input on that. Um, uh, uh, family, regardless if it's organic or wh wherever, what we're looking to do is just uh, get different styles and buildings um, and trying yeah, to get uh, sustainable technology and. Uh, sustainability uh, deals with things that you literally are polluting the planet uh, and then you're using it in your building and things like that. So that's right. more so the, the terminology of uh, what we're trying to think about is sustainability, not so much organic because yes, if it's, yes, some things may not be organic, but it can still be sustainable or it still be. Right. To, I understand. So we need to recycle what we can recycle and use in buildings, <laughs> things like, and that's what, um, even when they talk about earth ship tires, bottles, recyclable materials that uh, the earth is being polluted with. So uh, putting them into building materials, put them into like even the, the metal concrete, when you're creating roads with uh, tires and, you know, and certain, you know, certain sequence. Uh, so th that's what we have to do. We have to just find whatever we have out there and, 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 and use it and, and build with it. And then do the world, uh, you know, a favor by not polluting the planet with it, and then create ways where we can do more composting and 
just recycle this things in general. Uh, so it's all, you know, the good, the good thing is that's the purpose of this, us having all this land and we can just do a whole lot with it. And then, you know, we, you know, we're creating generational wealth to invest in bigger sectors or bigger investment projects. Because that's right. That's right, brother. The, the, the best thing to do is if we just had everything internally work, uh, which has been the situation that has propelled us, having to just depend on ex external factors and things, it's always things that don't really count on much and things like that, uh, you know, because they don't really have the best heart and interest. Uh, they say they may want to partner up and do certain things, uh, but people have ulterior motives. So uh, when we flip, the most important thing is get to the point where we can uh, flip certain business profits and reinvest it back in ourselves to where we're just doing, you know, we're funding everything that we need to fund. Um, and that's how I build small, the, the, the small aspect of business that I built over the years and things like that. And I was trying to use this concept for us to just do development project. And we'll get to the point where, you know, when we just look back and remember we didn't have anything at this office or remember when we didn't have a business center and, you know, and all of it will be there. But these are the things that we just have to keep building up from the ground up to get there To So there's one, uh, the rest of the people in our group and other people listening, you know, you can just be a part of the growth and flow of what we're doing. Uh, you're more than welcome to reach out and connect with us. Uh, but what we are building and what we have set in place is what we're setting in place and building. And we're not looking to flip and change it and adjust it for a bunch of people because of their own individual mindset. You know, what we have is a Pan-African operation, uh, literally to build a self-sufficient community where we literally just have all aspects of things that we need to where we can just be productive and just uh, invest ourselves into different things and also get, you know, go out there and um, invest in other countries. So. It's something to where there's no limitation and there's no, you know, there's, there's no limit in, in general. And there's no, nothing stopping us from just expanding what we need. We just gotta keep on working this thing together. And the most important things that we're doing as far as the land ownership, paperwork and all those things, those are the things that we're tackling and getting out of the way. But there's so many, it's enough of us to where we can just work on multiple things. We just need other people to get out there and just join the party and understand that um, whatever, you know, you, you thought it was, this is what it is. You know, we have an opportunity to build what we need to build, and there's no one standing in our way but us. And then, you know, naturally the black devils, because that's what they like to do, stand in the way of black progress. And you know, we just literally have to just keep shutting them down. So yes, fellas, yes, brothers and sisters, yes. Uh, the rise of black star pan African community. You know. So. Got a whole lot more this summer to share and got a lot of work to do as I work on a bunch of different projects and things and look to meet with a bunch of different people as I move around and do video calls and invite people down here and things like that. So keep everybody posted on the next meeting. You know, we all always have a meeting like once a month or so. So we just keep everybody posted. And uh, once we post the recording, if anybody have any questions or anything they want to share, uh, you can share in the comment section, emails, texts, or whatever. And uh, beyond that, we're going to work on this and build this. Uh, so family, in closing, uh, you can visit our website at africaforafricans.org, and you can find all the details in reference to our Black Star Pan-African community. And from there on, you can just reach out to us, and then uh, we can show you the land once you get to Ghana. All right. So everyone, good night. You take care, and I'm in the call, and we'll keep it strong.